This is part 8 of using Mathematica for ordinary differential equations. We're going to spend some time in this video reviewing what we learned about slope fields, especially for these kinds of equations of this form that you see here, where you have a first derivative dy dt on the left-hand side of the differential equation, and an expression that just involves the dependent variable y, no t's, on the right-hand side. That's called an autonomous equation. I am going to think of that right-hand side there as being a function of y. It's really an expression that defines a function of y if you watched my last video. That's called autonomous. Again, it's first order because it's a first derivative on the left. It's scalar because there's no vectors. Ordinary differential equation as opposed to partial differential equation. It's ordinary derivatives. We're going to think about the implications uh, of what we've learned about the slope field for solutions of ODEs like this. We'll continue thinking about slope fields with these Mathematica commands, and I'm going to use some new Mathematica commands not new for Mathematica, but maybe new for you. Grid, graphics, and point. First of all, grid is going to help me make a matrix of graphs. We're going to have a couple different graphs in the same picture. Actually, grid can be used matrices can be used to make matrices of lots of different things, and that's why I have the blank there. Um, and we'll use graphics and point to make a dot to introduce the idea of something called a phase line. All right, here's our example. It's a continuation of example five from video number five. We're considering an, a fixed but arbitrary initial value problem. I'm thinking of y sub zero as being a fixed number, but it's not specified, so this is arbitrary. But because it is some fixed number, this has a unique solution we will see. Um, we're wondering what are the equilibrium solutions? Where do solutions increase and where do they decrease? For what initial conditions? We've actually already talked about that. I'll just review it here. And then we'll try to take our observations about this system and other similar systems, autonomous, uh, to say what kinds of things, see what kinds of things you can say about solutions of those kinds of equations. We're also going to graph the right hand side expression thought of as a function of, as defining a function of y and relate that graph to the answers for parts a and b. And then we're going to try to make an animation of, that illustrates all of this, and that's where we're going to use grid and graphics and point in conjunction with manipulate vector plot, etc. All right. So first of all, I can take these one by one. Consider part A here. You've got this autonomous differential equation. First of all, what are the equilibrium solutions? Well, remember, equilibrium solutions are constant functions that solve the differential equation. Their, their graphs are horizontal lines. Therefore, their derivatives are always zero. Therefore, when you, re when you replace uh, y with those functions, with those constant functions on the right-hand side, you should also get 0. We've already talked about this equation before. The equilibrium solutions are when y is 0 and y is 3. Okay. Initially, you can think of those two things, 0 and 3, as being numbers. They are, in fact, numbers that make this right-hand side function thought about as just a plain function without, as defining a plain function without thinking about differential equations. They are numbers that make that thing zero. They are roots of that function, zeros of the function. But now, in the context of this differential equation, we think of these as being constant functions of t. y of t is always zero, y of t is always three. Those two constant functions are the only equilibrium solutions of this. Solutions are increasing when the, right, the derivative dy dt is positive, meaning you want the right-hand side to be positive for all values of t. That's going to happen when the y values, the y coordinates of the solution curves, um, make this thing positive, which will happen if you think about it when y is between 0 and 3. This is when y is between 0 and 3. That's going to be when solution curves are increasing. And we saw that in the slope field. On the other hand, when this expression, uh, values of y that lead to that expression being negative correspond to solutions in a slope field whose derivatives are always negative. And so this is going to be when y is greater than, uh, less than 0, excuse me, or y is greater than 3. That's going to give you, in the slope field, solutions that are always decreasing. And again, we've seen that before. Right. Based on that, ob those observations about this system and similar systems, what can you say about solutions of autonomous equations? Okay, I've got the stuff written out here. First of all, a number c, that's thought of as a number here, with the property that it's a zero or root of the function f, that's the right-hand side function, so when you plug it into f you get the number zero, generates 
a constant function, y of t equals c for all t whose graph is a horizontal line that solves this autonomous differential equation. In the slope field, the slope marks are horizontal. The solution is a horizontal line. We've seen such a solution is called an equilibrium solution. Second observation. Values of y where the right-hand side function is positive correspond to slope marks that have positive slopes in the slope field, and therefore the solution curves have positive slopes at those values of y. Since evidently solution curves don't seem to cross each other, at least in the examples we've considered, if f of the initial value of y is positive, the solution of that initial value problem is evidently always going up. It's always strictly increasing. Though perhaps f needs to be a nice function, an ordinary kind of function you're used to for this to be true. You can come up with crazy functions where maybe it's not true. Maybe I'll have time to talk about that later. Values of y that make the right-hand side function negative correspond to slope marks that have negative slope and solutions that have negative slopes at such values of y. Solution curves don't seem to cross each other again when f is nice and therefore such an initial value problem leads to a solution that's always decreasing. Since the slope field uh, for such an equation, again, has slope marks of constant slopes along horizontal lines, evidently solutions of such equations must be monotone. Monotone increasing, monotone decreasing, though not necessarily strictly so, they could be constant. Constant functions can be thought of actually as increasing and decreasing at the same time, uh, as long as you don't put the word strict in there. In particular, one interesting observation about this is that means that different, this kind of differential equation cannot have any periodic solutions like the sine of function or the cosine function. This kind of differential equations. There are other kinds of differential equations that can have the sine or cosine function as solutions. Um, actually, we've seen an example in a, a video or two ago, okay? But it's not of this type. There are second order equations are the most important kinds where you can get trig functions that are periodic as solutions. How is all this related to the graph of f of y, thought of as a function of y, when you draw its graph with the y-axis horizontal, which is the opposite of what we usually do, usually the y-axis is vertical, but if I draw the y-axis horizontal, we see the graph of the right-hand side function looking like this. Values of y between 0 and 3 correspond to values of f that are positive, which correspond to uh, solution curves that are positive in slope. Okay, Values of y like less than 0 and greater than 3 where this graph is below this horizontal y-axis corresponds in the slope field to solutions that are decreasing when the y-axis is is vertical in the slope field. Okay, Don't let it bother you that this axis here for y is horizontal. Alright, we want to finish this video by making an animation that illustrates all this and helps us understand it. We're going to make use of a command called grid. And I can use grid to make any kind of matrix that I want. A, a matrix is an array of numbers or vector of, or symbols or graphs, as we will use in this particular video. Uh, for example, this syntax makes a grid that's a 2x2 two two matrix, if you will. I could change this to a 2x3 two matrix with this kind of syntax. I could change it to a 1x2 matrix with this kind of syntax. And in fact, what I'm about to do with the graphs is I'm going to make a one by two matrix of graphs. The A is going to be the graph generated by the code that we've seen here before, and the B is going to be a graph made by new code that's actually related to this graph here. Um, we're going to use dsolve value again. Since I've already entered the right-hand side function, I'm going to use dsolve value here in a slightly different way. I'm going to go ahead and put the differential equation in, but I'm not going to type out the right-hand side function. I'm going to plug y into the right-hand side function that's already been defined, f. And remember, Mathematica doesn't work if you do that. You do need to put a t on the right-hand side here, even though this is an autonomous equation. That does not mean it's not autonomous. Put a comma, put the initial condition, on which I'm going to make to be arbitrary. Then to use dsolve value in the way I've shown you recently, I'm going to use a y here and then a t here. This returns what's called a pure function. Don't worry about this little thing here. Inverse functions are being used. It's not an error. It's a pure function uh, that sends t to this thing, and that is the unique solution of the initial value problem. I'm going to store this now in a symbol I'm going to call phi sub y0, as I have done recently where y0 is fixed but arbitrary. By putting a y0 and under, underscore there, 
That will allow me to now plot that function. Plot will plot the function. Vector plot plots the slope field. I'm putting those together inside a show. The end of the show is over here. Um, all that stuff is the first argument of this manipulate, which makes animations, and the animation parameters are B and Y zero. I've added this label style large to make the B and Y zero be bigger. Here it is. So B again is time. As time goes by, the solution moves forward. Y zero is the initial condition. I can change that as well. If I make it three, that's the equilibrium solution at Y equals three. All right, let's add the graph to this. Let's add this right-hand side graph. I'm just going to copy and paste this inside the grid. I'm going to put all this show stuff as the first thing in the grid, like I showed you uh, with the A and the B, the one by two matrix. So I'm going to put a grid to the right of this, two curvy braces. Come back down over here. There's the end of the show. This is the ending square bracket of the show. I'm going to put a comma after that two more curvy braces, and then a square bracket. So all of this stuff right here, that's what goes inside the grid. This being the first entry in the grid is going to make it the first, uh, the, in the one by two matrix, it's going to be the thing on the left, which I can enter and see. It's Well, you don't see the second thing yet because I don't have anything after the comma. By the way, if I don't have the image size medium here, it does make it pretty small, smaller than I want. If I put the image size medium back in there, then it makes big. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this plot into the right-hand side of the grid. After this comma, there we go. There's the plot. I've made a one by two matrix of plots. This made this thing on the right left and this thing on the right. Let's make this larger as well. Image size medium. Let's see the end of the plot. I believe is right there. Yes. That makes that one bigger. And now I also want to use graphics and point to illustrate the idea of something called a, a um, phase line. Let's see. I need to show this plot. I'm going to end the plotting command right there with graphics and point. The syntax is not quite ready. It's going to be a red large point. Point size is an option that I can use to make it a larger here. I'm going kind of fast, I know. I will take the time to explain this code in the next video in more detail. Graphics point are being combined here to make a dot that's going to go on this right hand side and in fact be animated. And where do I want this point to be? Red and points are just point size are just going to be um, make it look nice. I want this point to move along the y-axis as the y value of my solution curve changes. Turns out the syntax I need here um, is phi sub y zero, not of t but of b, the animation parameter b, comma zero. I will again explain this more in the next video, but let's just see that it works. Hopefully. In this video, yes, I have a big red point there that will move as B go changes. Notice the Y coordinate of this point right there at any given value of B is the same as the Y coordinate of the solution curve at that value of B. And by watching that point move as time goes by, so to speak, we are illustrating the idea of something called a phase line, which I will explain more also in the next video. The y-axis here uh, is something you can think of as something called a phase line. I'll see you with that in the next video.